In this lecture, let's learn about the different data types supported by BSON data. As we have learned earlier, BSON is a JSON-like data format which stands for binary JSON and it supports all the data types which is supported by JSON as well as some extra data types of its own. So BSON supports different types of data type and the most common one is string data type. A string value is simply a text value. Now when you assign a string value to a field, that value must be wrapped within double quotes or single quotes. And keep in mind that a document can be of maximum 16 megabytes in size. So you can store a string value of maximum 16 megabytes to your field. In that case, no other fields can be added for that document. Another data type which MongoDB supports is the Boolean type. A Boolean value is simply a true or false value. For example, we can specify whether a user is admin or not by specifying a Boolean value to that field. For example, this is admin field. Another core data type in MongoDB is number. Now in MongoDB, we have different data types for numbers to store different size of numbers. For example, we have number int. This data type can store an integer value of up to 32 bit long. And if you try to store a value that is longer than that, that will overflow and you might end up with a different number. Another numeric data type is number long. We can store this data type to store longer numbers because this data type can store a number of up to 64 bits. Now keep in mind that in MongoDB shell, if you store a number in a field, it is treated as a floating point number. That's because the MongoDB shell is based on JavaScript and JavaScript does not differentiate between numbers and floating point values. So therefore, every number will be stored as a 64-bit floating point number in the MongoDB shell. Now, we will talk about number data type in great detail in the future lectures of this course. But keep in mind that MongoDB is able to store smaller integers and bigger integers based on the data type you choose. If you choose number int, then in that case, in that data type, you can only store a number of up to 32 bits. But if you choose number long, there you can store numbers of up to 64 bits. And these data types also specify the amount of space they are going to take to store that number. So for example, this number int is going to take 32 bits to store a number. But this number long, it is going to take 64 bits to store a number. Apart from integers, you can also store decimal numbers. That is the numbers with decimal places. As I mentioned earlier, in the MongoDB shell, the number is stored as a floating point value by default. But you also got a special type called number decimal. And this number decimal is provided by MongoDB to store high precision floating point values. Because normal floating point values, also called as doubles, are basically rounded. So they are not very precise. For a lot of use cases, double floating point number is enough. For example, if you want to store the price of a product, in that case, double floating point is enough. But if you are doing some scientific calculation or anything like that, where it needs a very high precision, in that case, number decimal is the better option because it has very high precision. In case of number decimal, you get 34 decimal places after the dot. Then we also have object ID and we have already seen this. This is a special object automatically generated by MongoDB to give you a unique ID, which is not just a random string, but it also contains a temporal component so that if you create two documents after each other, you are guaranteed to have right order due to that ID because the older document will have the ID that comes prior to the other one. So there is a sorting built onto this object ID because of the timestamp it was created on. Then we also have data types for date. For example, we have this ISO date data type and there is also a timestamp type. The timestamp type is mostly used internally, but you can also use it explicitly. Mostly you will let MongoDB create it for you and that is also guaranteed to be unique. So even if you create two documents at the same time, they will not have exactly the same timestamp because it will basically take into consideration the current time and then also add an ordinal value so that two documents created at the same time don't get the same timestamp, but respect the order in which the insert command was executed. Then we can also have embedded documents. So embedded documents is basically a document which is assigned to a field and we will talk about embedded documents in great detail in our next lecture. Then we can also store arrays in a field. We use arrays to store a list. A list can be a list of numbers, strings, documents, or a list of lists. So for example, a list of arrays. And we will also talk about this array date type in great detail in our future lecture. So these are some of the basic data types which we will mostly work with and you should be aware of. 
Let's quickly see these data types in practice. Here I am in the MongoDB shell. Here let's go ahead and let's create a new collection. Let's call this collection maybe demo. And let's go ahead and let's use this insert one command to insert a new document in this demo collection. So there I am going to insert a document. In this document let's say I have a name field and to this I want to assign a string value. Now to assign a string value as I mentioned we need to use either double quotes like this or we can also use single quotes and there we can specify the value. So let's say name is John. Then I also want to have this is admin field and let's say John is an admin. So here I will assign this boolean value true. Then let's say I want to have this age field and here I want to assign a numeric value. Let's say maybe 34. Now here as I mentioned earlier since MongoDB shell is based on JavaScript here this integer 34 will be stored as a floating point value internally. It will not be stored as an integer. It will be stored as a 64 bit floating point value. Then let's also specify the date of birth property and for that I am going to use this new date function. So this new date will create a new date. If I don't pass any argument here it is going to use the current date and time but to this new date I can also pass some date and time as a string value. Okay but I am not going to do that. Here I simply want to use the current date and time. Then we can also use timestamp so for that we can say new timestamp. And this new timestamp will also return the current timestamp. With this, let's go ahead and let's insert this document. Alright, here we have an error. That's because we did not specify the field name here. Let's say the field name is created on. Now let's go ahead and let's run this command. And now I have misspelled the function name, the method name. It should be insert1. Let's run the command now. And you can see that one document has been inserted here with this object ID. Let's go ahead and let's use find one command on this demo collection. So for that, let's say db.demo.find1. And here we have our document. So as you can see, the date which we have created using this new date function, the data type of that value is ISO date. And the timestamp which we created using this new timestamp function, there the data type is timestamp. And here to this age field, this integer value 34 is stored. But it looks like an integer value, but internally it is stored as a floating point number. And to prove that, on this find1 method, let's try to access this age field. And on that, let's use this type of operator. So in MongoDB, we also have this type of operator, which we can use to get the data type of a value. If I go ahead and if I press enter, you can see the data type returned as number. So in JavaScript, we have only one data type for numbers, that is number. And in that data type, we can store both integer values and floating point values. Now here, let me show you one more thing. So in MongoDB, we have a utility method called stats. So it basically gives us the stats of the database. If I press enter, here you can see the number of collections which we have in our database. So we have two collections, the customer collection and this demo collection which we have just created. Then you can see the storage size as these many bytes. And here we also have this average object size. So this average object size is basically the total collection size. So we have two collections. So the sum of the size of both the collections divided by number of collections. So you can also use this utility method to check the stats of your database. So this is a very high level overview of what are the available data types we have in MongoDB. Now we will learn about these data types in great detail as we move along with this course. For now, this much of knowledge should be enough. Here is the MongoDB resource which you can also check out to learn more about Bison types. I will share this link in the description for your reference. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.